Hey, Roland. Let me turn this off. How you doing, Roland? So you were having some problems with the water quality. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of step you through making sure that you do the water quality test kits correctly. Number one is um, the certain certain ones, um, certain ones that you have to do certain things to to get a good accurate uh, count on it. So the first thing you want to do is your ammonia. Okay, I just give the bottle a little shake. Not too crucial with these ones, and you're gonna put eight drops in. And this is gonna give you an idea of what your ammonias are. This is what's gonna kill the fish. High concentrations of that, when you get up to, for like a tilapia, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. When you get into high concentrations of uh, ammonia, tilapia can handle it. Tilapia can get up to like three parts per million. But you start getting up into the, uh, the fours and the sixes and the eights, um, it's going to cost you. You're going to shake that for five seconds, and you're going to let that sit for five minutes, okay? The next one you're going to do... All right, so the next one that you're going to do is your nitrites, okay? That's that single bottle. You put five of them in there, okay? What you're going to do is you're going to pop in your five, and you're going to wait five minutes for those. You're going to get this one as well. You can see how it's already starting to turn purple, so you know that your bacteria is going to be running good. So what you want to do is you're going to shake this up, and you're going to let that go for five minutes. Now this is the crucial one. This is your nitrates, okay? Your nitrates are going to dictate how much food your system is getting. So your bottle number one, you're going to shake, okay? You got to shake this bottle just a little bit, and you're going to put in 10 drops. You got to shake this bottle, which is nitrate solution number two. You have to shake this for 30 seconds. This is crucial. You'll get bad measurements on your uh, on your nitrates if you don't shake this for uh, for 30 seconds. Then once you put the bottle droplets in there, you you got to shake the actual um, pipette for a minute, and that's going to tell you what your true nitrates are. So your nitrates are probably higher than what yours is registering on your thing, on your water test, and the reason it's going to be doing that is probably because you didn't do this. So we shook that for 30 seconds. We're going to pop 10 of these in here. Boom. <coughs> now what you're going to do is you're going to shake this for one minute. And that's going to give you a, a true measurement of your nitrates. Um, while I'm shaking this, we'll talk, I've got a little nursery in here. I've got about 60 fish. They're starting to get real, real big. I ended up getting them as a uh, sack fry. But that's what, I've designed this little uh, laundry basket with a painter's mesh. I took some pool noodles, cut them up with some zip strips, and they float around. You can take a turkey baster, clean out their settable solids. Anytime I'm cleaning out the settable solids, I stick it back down into the drain. That drain will take it down to the bio media. Now, we have an AST Endurance 2000. It's a little expensive. A lot of DIY guys do not use these because of their cost. But um, there's beads that are in this, and these beads float, okay? If you, um, there's a uh, aeration, there's an air tube that actually feeds air and pressurizes it down, and then once it uh, vapor locks, it sends a big bubble shaking all these beads out. I had to turn that off when I was doing my biological reaction, uh, or my, I'm sorry, my bio load uh, growing, because your nitrous uh, simonis is going to, uh, have to colonize, but if it's being shuck, they're being shuck off before they can colonize and attach. And they're a slow growing bacteria, okay? You're already ahead of the game right now on the bacteria growth, so you're already there. So if you have any aeration on your um, on your biomedia, you, you wanna turn that down just to a little trickle, or at your inlet, put your aeration in there so that water that's coming through there is unperverted and unshucking. Um, and then uh, basically um, I shut off my UV sterilizer because that's going to kill any bacteria that's in the water floating and it hasn't got attached yet. 
So as you're staging this, um, you want this to just have water flowing through it, okay? Once you get your stuff to the point where um, your bacteria and your water quality is getting better, then you can turn around and go ahead and turn on your, uh, your uh, aeration that's on your, uh, on your uh, bio media. Now, when your bio load is growing, all right, so that one's done. So when your bio load is growing and your nitrous harmonis and your nitrous bacter is, uh, is growing and, and it's gotten there, this is going to turn to yellow, the ammonia. This one here is your nitrites. This is basically, this is your bacteria that's in your system. That's your nitrous ammonis and your nitrous bacter. That stuff, once it gets dark like that, that means that that's eating ammonia. Now, you got to be careful because you've got to keep ammonia in here to keep this alive. And if you've got small fish like we do, you have to feed, it'll kind of overfeed a little bit and you'll have plenty of bacteria. But daily, you need to be checking ammonia. And then this one here, this is your byproduct. So this bacteria eats the ammonia and then this is what it excretes. And this is your nitrates which is what's going to feed your plants. Now, um, here, let me take your for a second, son. Okay. So this filter is designed as an automatic backwash, okay? Um, down there at that little tube down there at the bottom, um, it will s take the water and all the uh, settable solids, put it in this chamber, and it splashes over this little arch, and it goes into this one, okay? Then what we do is uh, we come over here, hit this valve, and then um, I've got a clear sight tube on this. And so this, we hit this valve and you'll see the solids. Once it runs clear, those solids are out of it. And then what we do is we pump it into this pickle jar right here. This is a mineralization tank. This tank right here is kind of like, uh, you know, it's a point source for your nutrients. And then um, also you have aeration in here. So it's aerobically breaking down your settable solids and it's increasing the nutrient value of your uh, solids by 60%. We pump it through wall and it goes down into this sump that's 250 gallons. That gets pumped back up and out, and that goes along here, and that'll go into the beds. I have two, uh, two beds that are about 250 gallons each, and then I have a, a radial flow through um, where that water's just constantly flowing through these guys, and then it goes back into the drain and it all marries back up on the, uh, down on the sump. Uh, for aeration, we have that regenerative blower and we have this soaker tube, it's really cheap. And um, you just put a halo in there and then that, that's fresh oxygenated water that's going into these uh, systems. Um, we, had a, we had a leak on one of our beds, so we decided that uh, no more DIY. I went ahead and broke down and I bought the actual uh, 45 mil liners. We're in the process of uh, getting those switched out this week. So <clears throat> I didn't wanna lose any of my bed space. So what I decided to do was do just a downward drain. And the way they're designed is, um, here's one right now because it's in construction. The water will come down here, okay? It fills this chamber up. This chamber is just a little bit bigger, okay? And then we have this inch and a half that goes all the way up and it goes into a coupling right here. And so the water comes in and it fills this chamber up and there's a pipe that's inside of here like that. The, de the height of your pipe is going to dictate the height of your bed. And so, it, but the drain is essentially outside, so that way you, it's easier to clean. You can brush it and push it down. And also, uh, you're, using all, you're utilizing all your bed space for grow area. A lot of people use about, lose about six inches, which is essentially five plants, um, four or five plants that you could be uh, uh, maximizing your grow space out of. So that's why we designed what we did on that one. So we have those two right there. They go down in here, and then they shoot over, and then they go back into the pump. This is what you call a decoupled system. So it's decoupled because the settable solids leave here, they drop down into the sump, and then the sump is on a research system. So I check the sump for total TDS, total dissolved solids, um, and if there's any nutrient deficiencies like where it needs like chelated iron or something, you can add it in here, and it's not going to bother the fish at all. Remember, the fish need the plant. Uh, the plants need the fish, but the uh, fish don't need the plants. If you've got a good filtration device, so um, and there's little tricks that you can do. Um, I made a homemade venturi right here. Um, I just got a little tip down in the bottom. Um, I run it down here about two feet, and then uh, I, it splits off into a T. And this is just off of my flow of my water pump. 
there's no aeration at all except for this little air tube right here from that little machine and um, that's just to give it a little more air of a boost but even without this it's still creating bubbles like that and so um, the nature behind it is, is uh, the longer that the bubble is submerged the uh, the more oxygenation and, uh, and uh, that that's happening in the water you're, you're, you're taking out more carbon dioxide from the water and so anyways you can see how that works it works really really good that's my system Okay, I got a regenerative blower that feeds the whole entire system. I oxygenate the uh, the tank. I um, oxygenate the mineralization tank that comes here. That feeds uh, uh, for the uh, for the mineralization tank to aerobically break that down. I have air in all the beds. The halos on the uh, the um, vertical towers, and then I also have the one that's over there inside the. Uh, the uh, sump right there um, it's a little halo it's about a three and a half foot halo and um, it sits there in bubbles so that way that no matter where that air is at at all times it's oxygenated wherever that water's at <coughs> so anyways it's been about five minutes and uh, this is what it looks like right here brother so this one's yellow which is good that means you can add fish um, you can add fish when you um, if you're adding tilapia they can tolerate up to two parts per million I found um, you start getting into the fours and you're going to start losing fish. But because yours is looking like this and you've got that purple in your nitrates, um, it led me to believe that maybe you might have tested this incorrectly. So make sure that you pay attention to how you're doing that. you got to shake this in bottle two for 30 seconds and you got to shake the vial for a minute. And that's going to give you an accurate reading on that. And so right now, um, as you can read that, we're at about 40 parts per million. So what that's telling you is, is we are not ready for plants, okay? We need, to, uh, we need to grow these fish out a little bit. We need to get a little bit more uh, settable solids, and then, uh, and then we'll start to be able to plant. Now, um, if you're not trying to do this completely natural, you can get some, like, master blend, and you can dilute it and uh, break it down, and then you could add it to your sump or your system and go. But if you are coupled where the water from the uh, plants go back to the fish, you got to be a little careful with giving those chemicals out. That's why I designed this decoupled system. Anyways, if you have any questions, let me know. Um, but yeah, that's where we're at right now. And uh, they're growing pretty big. Um, and so I typically, what I do is I'll feed the fish and then I'll feed the filter. So I'll put a little bit of feed in there so it breaks down. And that filter's doing its job and I'm feeding the bacteria. But the most important part, like I said, is make sure that your ammonia is down to next to nothing. If you start to see that creeping up, don't panic, don't do a water change. Hey bus, come here real quick. Um, don't do a water change or anything, but uh, make sure that you um, kind of keep an eye on that because you might have to do a water change, but um, don't panic and start removing that stuff because you're gonna start moving bacteria and all that. So what we're gonna do here, I'm gonna show you real quick. Hold this real quick, I'm gonna do a uh, pH on him so I can show him. You're fighting the pH balance on there, and uh, it, I know it's hard. You want to micromanage it. Deep down inside, you want to make it perfect. It's going to self-ballast, okay? So what we're going to do now is we're going to take out our pH solution. Uh, we don't need a... We're probably in a high range, so... Usually we're about 7.8 on the high. How much drops do you want to do of that? There's five of these. He's got the API kit as well. Okay. You're going to shake this one as well. Five seconds. And then boom. So it's very, very common. We have a very hard water here. When I got the water quality sample uh, from, the, uh, from the well, um, it said that it was, uh, we're closer to like... Uh, um, on our settables, I mean, I'm trying to remember now, it was the, the hard minerals, like your calcium and stuff like that, we're at like 180 to 200, which is medium high. And so you can see right here, you know, we're definitely, we're at 8.2. I don't care about this. I don't care about the hard water hardness. Um, now, if you've got a, a, a sensitive fish, like saltwater fish or something, that's going to be an issue. But don't be chasing that with pH up and pH down because those chemical buffers are only temporary. So um, it, they're not going to do it for the long term. 
Um, if you end up having hard water and you absolutely just want to make sure that that hard water is no longer hard, um, you're going to have to invest in a um, probably a, a uh, water softener um, that has the tank where it removes the salt, or you're going to have to do like a reverse osmosis. You're going to drop 500 bucks for something that would run this one here would cost me 500 bucks. That's 500 gallons a day. So um, you got to kind of think about uh, what's the cost or versus the deal. So um, if you're going to go this way and you want to uh, thin this out, you can, or you could just, if you're getting a tilapia or something like that for, uh, for your fish, uh, tilapia can tolerate this. They're an 8.2 right now and they're happy. They're eating, they're not showing any stress. Um, there is a uh, online, I found a inline filter because we fill with just a garden hose over here. And um, our well water is very, very hot, or uh, hard. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do an inline water fi uh, filter on that. And um, even if I got you know six months use out of it, we're good. Um, even if I cut half of my uh, hard water down, we're good. And um, I'll tell you how that works uh, if you wanna keep in touch. But anyways, uh, that's kind of where we're at on that. So I just wanted to give you a heads up and uh, kind of let you know what, what we had. And uh, I like I said, brother, I've just been fighting the same exact thing you've been fighting. Um, and it's been, a, it's been a hassle. But again, uh, aeration, you can do aeration before the pump. But when it comes to your bio, bio media, you want to have that little to no oxygen in there. Um, you want it just to be enough oxygen to be able to get the bacteria to grow, but you don't want to be shaking them off the beads in the media. So hopefully that helps, and we'll talk to you soon. Many blessings.